Good evening. Thank you for coming out tonight. Appreciate it. I know uh, time is a big ask. So uh, thank, thank you for the big ask. <laughs> you know, um, the, the truth is, like church can be, our, our church has almost 1,350 people in it. Uh, but uh, not all of those people actually contribute to making this church what it is. Uh, you're the ones that uh, actually uh, make this church. So as we are in the journey of discovering um, who God wants us to be, and we're being that on purpose, uh, you're the guys that make that happen. So in other words, if if we're going to have, if we're going to be a praying church, it's usually this group that's going to show up for prayer, right? And if we're going to be a worshiping church, it's this group. And uh, if we're going to be a serving church, it's this group. Uh, seems to me that Jesus spent three and a half years, the greatest leader that ever lived, and had 120 people uh, to start the whole movement off. So I think we have that many here tonight. So I think we could get something powerful going here, don't you think? <laughs> I think there's a possibility for that. So uh, this night is, uh, it's about uh, casting vision and us be, knowing where we're going so that uh, we can all go there together and we can all pull in the same direction and be in a sense of alignment uh, in that. And, uh, and just uh, there's so much power in being able to pull together. Uh, and so we're going to talk about the future, but, uh, but I want to I step back and, and sort of get a running start and talk about the past a little bit and, and just give us a little bit of context about uh, the, the DNA and the spirit uh, and the culture of our house. Uh, when Suzette and I drove into Asheville, uh, September 1st, 1989, uh, we came here with a with this pioneering kind of spirit. Um, there was there was no church here. I remember when we were telling people we're moving to Asheville to start a church, especially 25 years ago. Uh, there weren't a lot of people doing that, and there were a lot of people like from our church uh, that thought we were crazy. To, to go. you mean you're going? There's not a church that you're going to take over or pastor. It's just you're going to go start a church and. Um, we said, yeah, we are. We're going to go start a church. And uh, there were points in the first few months that I thought maybe they're right. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe they're really right about that. But, but uh, I, just, I just want you to know that, uh, you know, we moved into town and, and uh, there was no church. Uh, there were no people. Uh, there was, and that's what church is. Hello. Uh, there, was, there was literally, there was no money. Uh, there was no equipment. Uh, there was no building, uh, there was nothing, uh, but we, we had this dream uh, inside of us, and we had this vision of this church uh, in, inside of us, and uh, you guys, if, if you're around any, you, you always hear me talk about the importance and the power of vision, and you know, that when you can see a more beautiful, greater future. If you can see it, you can get there. But if you can't see it, you, you're just, you're never going to get there. And so um, this, this church was birthed in the spirit of never settle. Everybody say never settle. Never settle. Uh, if, if you want to settle, you won't like this church. Right? If you, if you just want to settle down and uh, and just in coast or just sort of, you know, whatever. Uh, I am one pastor that's going to aggravate the heck out of you. Uh, so, so you're either going to love the fact that uh, our church is a never settled church or you're going to hate it. And uh, I li literally remember one time we had this thing happen in our house with, that's called a puff back. Does anybody know what that is? Our old furnace just did a puff back and it put this um, thin of soot all over everything in our house. I remember this is when we had Tuesday morning prayer, six in the morning, and all of a sudden, uh, um, Suzette is is like texting or calling or something, and 
saying, you got to come home. And I go home and she's got black all around her nose. And, uh, and I'm thinking, oh, great. My wife has gotten into drugs or something. No, I, that wasn't what I was thinking. But, uh, but, uh, but uh, so we couldn't figure out what was going on. And finally, we figured out what was happening. And so for, I think, for five or six weeks, uh, our homeowner's insurance paid for this. But for five or six weeks, we had about five, six, eight people in our house every day cleaning this soot off of everything. And I mean, you know, that gets old, just having somebody in your house. It's like, uh, so, but, but I do remember one time, uh, these, they were actually cleaning in our bathroom, and they didn't know I was actually um, to the side, and they were talking about, do you know that this, this guy pastors that rock church down the road? And, uh, and, this, and this one girl said, yeah, I've been there, but I don't, I don't like going there, because they just don't leave you alone. They just keep making you, and I'm like, I'm listening to this going... Get out of my house, man. What you doing? <laughs> but, but, uh, but, you know, our whole existence has just had never settled. Uh, and it's in the DNA of our church. And uh, from, from the moment we started our church till we, we made the move from the hotel to the office park and then from the office park to the shopping center and then from the shopping center to buying this land and then building this building that we're in now then outgrowing this building, uh, and then building the annex to house our, our next generation ministries. And uh, it's, we, we've always had this kind of never settle thing going on. And, you know, I, I know sometimes people think, uh, you know, you, you talk about facilities, you talk about buildings, and uh, they don't really matter that much. But how many of you know when it's raining, are you glad when you have a house? Come on, it's like, you know. And so here's, here's what I know. Um, obviously, our church is not just about facilities and, and buildings. They just house what happens. But I do know this, that every, every spot we've ever been in, um, every new facility literally shaped the season uh, that God was working in us. There's, there's something about uh, if some, it would enlarge, it would improve the container uh, and and I remember the stress I used to feel at, in the early days of our church when we would start to kind of uh, have to move on to the next thing, the next season, uh, the next chapter, um, trying to find a spot for, uh, you know, for 60 people to start meeting, trying to spot, find a spot for 200 people to start meeting, trying to find a spot for 400 people to start meeting, uh, trying to build this building, uh, and, and just the... the the, the battle that was involved, because how many of you know the, the devil hates for us to take territory? And he really does. I mean, so he battles, you, he, you know, I believe this, he battles you having your house uh, because if you get your stake in the ground, he doesn't like that. And, and the battle's over the earth. It really is. We're battling over the earth. We're trying to bring heaven uh, into the earth. So, Here's what I know is that every new move for us uh, opened up a new season for the life of our church. And uh, what I want to say to you guys tonight and what I really want to uh, birth in the spirit of our church is that uh, it, it is definitely time for a new season for our church. And amen. Somebody say praise the Lord for that. Um, It's, and honestly, it's not because uh, anything is wrong that we need, that it's time for a new season. It's because it's time for a new season. Uh, it's, it's, time, it's time for us to take new land. It's time for us to win new battles. Uh, it, it's time for us to climb new mountains. Uh, it's, it's time for us to never settle. Come on, everybody say never settle. And, and so uh, you guys have heard, heard us talk about this. I don't even need to show the pictures because you've seen them how many times. But you know that uh, we cast the vision on our 25th anniversary in October uh, to reorient and kind of rethink our whole facility. What would, what would our facility look like if we were building it for today uh, and for tomorrow? Uh, would, if we just had a clean uh, sheet of paper would we build the same thing or would we build something different? 
And so we've really started to work on how can we make our church fit the church we are today? Because the way we did church 17 years ago is, is different than the way we do church now. I'm glad. I, I loved the church we were 17 years ago, but I don't want to be that church anymore. You, may, you know, I love the clothes I wore 17 years ago, but I ain't wearing those anymore, right? Somebody say amen and turn, look at your neighbor and say, you should listen to that. No, no, don't. So I, I want us to, I want to look at a passage of scripture, uh, I think that can help us uh, really think about where we are and, and, and how to turn the page uh, to move into a new season. And maybe you're ready for a new season. Anybody ready for a new season? Come on, are you really? Are you ready for a new season in your life? And uh, Joshua uh, chapter 1 is an amazing uh, piece of scripture because it, it literally is the turn of an era. It's, it's the turn of, of a whole way that God is moving in the earth. And for 40 years, uh, Israel, the people of God, have been wandering in the wilderness. Uh, they have been eating manna that falls out of heaven. So they've had this miraculous provision. They've been wearing the same clothes for 40 years. Hey-hoo. They've been wearing the same shoes. Can I get a witness from a sister? They've been wearing the same shoes for 40 years. Some of you know God wasn't in that. And um, I'll say for a sister, I got as many shoes as my wife now, I think. So I, I got nothing to say. So I like to have a strong shoe game. So leave me alone. Just, just leave me alone. So here, check it out, baby. So, but come on. 40 years of wandering, 40 years of just, uh, this, just expecting manna to fall out of the sky, 40 years of wearing the same clothes, 40 years of existing, moving but going nowhere for 40 years. And, and God is about ready to turn the page for, for Israel. Uh, a new day is arriving, arising for them. Uh, and he's given some in, them instruction about how to enter into a new day. And I believe there's some things that, that we could take for ourselves as individuals and that we could take for ourselves as a church. So uh, the verses will be on the screen, but I want to read a little bit of Joshua chapter 1. It says, It came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, to the sons of Israel. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you, just as I spoke to Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun, will be your territory. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Just as I've been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. For you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that's written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have success. That's one of my favorite passages of Scripture, because I, I think we get out of this the heart of God that God wants you, God wants me, God wants our church to have success and to prosper wherever we go. Can anybody see that in there? Come on, that's the will of God for your life. That's not just passive. That's not just for the superstars. That's not just for the, you know, the, the most brilliant people on the planet or the most talented people. That is God's will for your life. And that's God's will for our church is he wants our church to prosper he wants our church to succeed 
He wants our, our church blessed so that we can be a blessing to others. Just like he wants you blessed so that you can be a blessing to others. Never doubt that it's God's intended purpose to bless your life. Don't ever doubt that. Don't ever, that's always God's will for your life. If you're seeking to grow, you're in the will of God. If you're seeking to increase, you're in the will of God. If you're seeking to flourish, you're in the will of God. That is God's will for your life. And can I just say that if you're after that, you're right in the middle of God's best for your life. And I, and I believe that, that any church that's after that is after God's best for their existence. You, we can never settle. I think this is a, a, an enormous day because the page is turning. For, for 40 years, they have been hearing the stories of coming out of Egypt. Uh, for 40 years, they have heard about the Red Sea. For 40 years, they've been hearing about this promised land that someday, maybe way off, somehow, some way, is going to come. And now, all of a sudden, the day is here. Can you imagine what that feels like? It's like you've you just been hearing about it, hearing about it, hearing about it, hearing about it, and all of a sudden, it's here. The day is here. It's time to get up and do it now. Live it now. Go for it now. Come on. Amen. Somebody say, never settle. Never settle. Never settle. A any church that just settles into, let's maintain the aquarium, is on its way to extinction. Uh, there, that church has moved out of God's best. For its, lot, for its reason it exists. We, we exist to grow. We exist to reach people. We, you know, so, you know, this, this past weekend, uh, we really wrestled with this, but I, I, my niece was getting married. We, we talked, we prayed, we talked with our team. We just, you know, just to decide, should Suzette and I, or could we miss this Sunday morning uh, to make an investment into my family and we just felt like that was the move we needed to make. Which, by the way, I know Ryan did an awesome job this morning. I haven't, I haven't even listened to it, but I know it's great. I just know it was great. Uh, and so, but uh, I have to say, uh, I'm not usually anywhere but here on Sunday morning. And we're in the airport, and we're, you know, we got up at the crack of dawn 30, and uh, we're, we're driving to the airport. The airport's full of people. Our airplane's full of people. And there's something in me wanted to stand up and go, why aren't you in church? Why are you here? Of course, they could have said the same thing to me, right? But, but uh, come on, anybody think we still have some work to do? And, you know, we're, we arrive in Asheville around 1230 or so, and we're in our car, and there's cars everywhere. And maybe they already went to church. But I'm thinking there's still a lot of people that we need to reach. There's still a lot. Come on. There, there's still a lot of people that are going to spend eternity somewhere. And, and we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that that eternity for them is not going to be in hell. Every, to the best of our ability, we're going we're to do that. So we're never going to settle. So let me give you a couple of ideas uh, that I think can help us. Uh, so just three ideas. Uh, never settle, fresh start, new season, keys to uh, let's move into the new season. Number one is let the past go. Sometimes that's hard to do, isn't it? I mean, we know we want to, but it's just hard to do. It, it's just to get, you get familiar. Because, you know, the truth is, like, I can look around this room and pretty much I, can, I know where you're going to, people are, because you sit in the same spot. <laughs> right? And if any, you don't, even, you don't even know how to worship if you would move to the other side of the room. It's like, it's weird over here. It's, the Holy Spirit's not even over on that side of the room. How do they even do this here? 
Let the past go. Joshua 1, 2, Moses, my servant, is dead. The way life was, the way things happened, the way uh, God interacted with Israel, uh, that season is over. Now, therefore, arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I'm giving to them, to the sons of Israel. So it, it's this idea. This is what used to be going on. This is what used to be, but that chapter is closed. It's a new day. Come on up. A, a lot of us can look, can anybody look back on a past season and say, glad that's over? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Anybody looking back on a past season and saying, I hope that's over? Right? Glad that one's over. But even when it's over, uh, the, the spirit of it can still haunt us. Uh, and, and the truth is, the past hurts. Uh, we keep wanting the, it to be over. Past failures, past rejections um, can, can continue to kind of linger on us. And today, I, I just want to encourage you as an individual, not just for uh, as our church moves forward, but today... Uh, let's leave the baggage of the past and let's not carry it around anymore. Come on. Every, all the shame, all the regret, all the hurt, all the disappointment, all the stupidity that we've done, <laughs> that people have done to us, can, can, we, just, can we just say we're going to lay it at the feet of Jesus and leave it there? Anybody want to do that? Will you do it? It's, it's, there comes a day where you have to go, Moses is dead. The past is over. It, it's, it's time to move on. It's time to move into the new season. And, and here's, here's kind of what I want to say to us today. So for us, Moses is dead. Kingdom builders. Anybody ever talk about kingdom builders? Kingdom builders is dead. It's over. It's just over. <laughs> so, you know, Kingdom Builders has been our church's kind of collective effort to do some a few projects, to fund some missions, to fund some uh, media, some technology. Uh, just and and the, and the truth is. Uh, our approach to Kingdom Builders over the past few years has helped us uh, survive as a church. Uh, it's, it's helped us move inch forward. But I just I want to say to you, um, this is not a day for us to just coast along an inch forward any longer. Uh, it's, it's time to go, that season is done. Here's the new season and we're going to go for it like we've never gone for it before. We're just going to go for it. Kingdom Builders is dead. Everybody say Kingdom Builders is dead. Don't ever say those two words again around here. Kingdom Builders. Right? So here's where we're going. Uh, the, so the, the new season uh, for us as we move forward, as we build these buildings and send teams to the nations and improve technology and just and and resource is called endeavor everybody say endeavor endeavor, endeavor. now uh, endeavor is a cool word uh, if you look it up in the dictionary uh online which everything online is perfectly true correct is that that's what i hear i hear it's all true uh endeavor is a conscientious or concerted effort toward an end uh, another definition is this, and I like this one. A purposeful or industrious undertaking, especially one that requires effort or boldness. I like it. Come on. It, re it just, it requires, th this isn't, this isn't like you're in first gear and you're going to push the gas so you could go two miles an hour faster. This is like new car. Not just change gears, new car, right? So 
to move into a really to move into a new season means I'm letting go of the old season. Uh, the day for Israel to, to change had arrived. Uh, no longer were they going to be the desert wandering group. No longer were they going to be the manna fed group, which they could point to and say, well, certainly this shows that God's in the midst of us. There were people that were born into wilderness. Uh, there were people that were born into wandering. So they're thinking, that's what it is. That's the way this goes. That's what walking with God is like. It's wandering. It's just drifting around. Uh, now, God is saying, hey, listen, now you're not just wandering. Now you're city takers. You're not just waiting for manna to fall out of the sky. You're not just wandering around whenever the cloud moves or the pillar of fire moves. You're not just wearing the same shoes and the same shirt all the time over and over and over and over and over again. Now, you're city takers. So let me say this. Um, we, have a, we have a whole generation in our church. And, and when I say generation, I do not mean an age. Because the truth is, we are all this generation, right? I mean, so it's not like there's a, a, a young generation and an older generation. We're all this generation. We're the generation of this church right now. We're the 2015 version of the Rock Church. The best version that's ever existed right here. That's us, right? So whether you're seven or 77, I think that covers almost everybody in our church, I don't know, but if you're in there, you're, you're all in this generation. We do have a whole generation in our church that's never paid the price to build something great for God. Uh, we, included in that is a generation that has done something great for God in the past, but hasn't done anything. What have you done for me lately? Come on. Any Janet Jackson fans in the house? Come on. You're not even a fan, but you know the song. Come on. So please understand what I'm saying. That... We have this whole generation in our church now that's, we've, for, for 15 years, we've basically just kind of existed. I mean, we've reached a lot of people, there's no question. But we, but this generation, our generation, you, me, us, we all walk into a building that's already here. We all walk in and, and see screens that are already here. We all walk in and experience production values that we haven't contributed anything to make it happen. We, we all walk in. In other words, we have a whole generation that has spent 15 years not significantly paying a price, just sort of embracing the price that's been paid. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Right? Not faulting us, just saying Moses is dead. It's time to turn the page. I, I, I just want to know, is there anybody who wants to do something great for God? Come on. Uh, don't, I, don't, I just want to come. I don't want to just go to church. I actually want to be a part of doing something great for God. Isaiah 42, verse 9 says, Behold, the former things have come to pass. Aren't you glad things come to pass? Now I declare new things. Before they spring forth, I proclaim them to you. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise from the end of the earth. Isaiah 43, verse 18. Do not call to mind the former things or ponder things of the past. Behold, I will do something new. You know, we just listened to a guy recently. Our staff went away to a, uh, a conference, and, and my heart he really spoke to my heart. He said, I know there are processes that need to happen but God is still the God of the breakthrough. You know, we work hard on our systems. We work hard on our processes. But I'm believing God for a breakthrough. I'm believing God for a breakthrough for, for our church. 
Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even make a roadway in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. Isaiah 43 in the message says this, forget about what's happened, forget about it. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert, be present. I'm about to, to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'm making a road through the desert, rivers in the badlands. I just say, I think it's time for us to turn the page and become a, a new generation. All of us, no matter what age we are, a new generation of city takers. A, 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 new, a new generation of mountain climbers. A new, a new generation that, that breaks through. Second idea that I, I think you, I see in this passage is uh, not only you have to let the past go, but you have to rise up and get going. So it's, sometimes it's easy to plan, to think, uh, to dream, to ponder, uh, but eventually... He says to, to Joshua, now therefore arise, get up, and get going. Now, many of you know, after 40 years of life one way, to say, get up and move into a new season, that could be hard. Sometimes it's hard to get up and, and go at it again. Sometimes it's hard to get up and try again. I know. I mean, sometimes after a tough season, it's hard to get up and go, I'm going to go after it one more time. Sometimes after a, after a tough relationship thing has happened, it's tough to get up and go, I'm going to go for it again. Sometimes after a, a bad deal has happened, it's tough to get up. And get on. But I would say this. I think it's also equally as tough to get up and get going after an extended period of coasting or an extended period of mediocrity. Because what happens is you can, you can get too guarded. You could get, you get too safe. You're not going to have breakthrough if you're just trying to be safe. You can get too afraid. And so you're kind of guarding... You've gotten used to this 40 years of wandering, 40 years of manna, 40 years of the same clothes. Don't like it, but I'm used to it. I know what, I know what it's going to be. I know what I'm wearing tomorrow. Come on, after 15 years, it could be easy for us just to go, well, we know the deal. This is good enough, huh? Somebody say never settle. Come on. You got to rise and get going again. Proverbs 24, verse 16 says a righteous man falls seven times, but he rises again. But the wicked stumble in time of calamity. Uh, this is one of my great also favorite passages, but I just want to talk about it. Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. You got to arise and live in the light you have now. So here's what I want to say. Your light has come. You don't have light on everything, but you have light on something. Come on, you know something. Right? Turn and tell your neighbor, I do know something. Sometimes we want to wait till. All the lights come on before we make a move. But if we had waited until all the lights to come on, we'd still be youth pastors in Tallahassee, Florida. Can you hear what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to go, there's enough light for me to take the next step. There's, a, there's, a, there's enough certainty for me to make a move. I don't, I don't know what step four, step five, step ten is, but I know what the next step is. And so you never know at all. And if you, if you keep waiting till all the lights come on, you're frozen. You'll never move. 
Verse 2 says, For behold, darkness covers the earth, deep darkness the peoples, but the Lord will rise upon you and his glory will appear upon you. No, no matter how bad it gets, the darker it gets, the more the glory of the Lord can shine. And I can't ever remember a time where it would be more important for the church to rise up and shine than right now. I mean, honestly, come on. I mean, there is so much crazy going on in this world. I mean, there, I mean, you watch what's going on in Baltimore, what's going on in Ferguson, what's going on with ISIS, what's going on uh, around. I mean, it's, it is crazy. It's a dark day. The last thing that we want to do is, is let darkness decide our life. If there ever was a day for us to get up and make a move and shine, is right there ever was a day for the church to shine today is that day isaiah 60 verse 3 says nations will come to your light kings will come to the brightness of your rising here's the way it works people and opportunity are drawn to your light People and opportunity are drawn to your rising. Uh, I want to say this in the right way. When, when, when people start getting bummed, uh, depressed, settled, mediocre, the people who could make a difference aren't drawn to that. Opportunity is not drawn to that. Can you hear what I'm saying? And I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to put anything on anybody. But I want to say this, you got to rise up and just go, I'm going for it, for somebody to go, well, I'll help. Because if, if, if you're just sitting around feeling sorry for yourself, nobody's going to come help. I'm just, I'm just telling you that for your own good. You, you, can't, you can't think, oh, they're going to come help me because things are bad for me. No, they're going to help you when you get up and go, I'm going for it. Somebody's going to come. Somebody's going to come help you. Somebody's going to come and be drawn to you. Uh, and then verse 4 says, Lift up your eyes round about and see they will all gather together. They'll come to you. Your sons, you will come from afar. Your daughters will be carried in their arms. You gotta, the Bible says lift up your eyes to see. You got you to lift up your head to see. You, you can't see when you're looking down. You can't see when you're looking back. You got to be looking ahead. Verse 5 says this, then you will see and be radiant and your heart will thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea will be turned to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. I think there's something powerful about a heart that's full of energy, a thrilled heart, a rejoicing heart. And here's what the Bible says, the abundance it comes to that. This is, what, this is what these verses say, verse 5. The wealth of the nations comes to you. Come on, you got to get up and get going. Jo the Lord tells Joshua, you got to get up and get going with this thing. I know you don't have it all figured out. You've never taken a city before. You don't even know how to do it. But we're going to go do this. And then the third idea is this crossover into new territory. Now, this is, to me is a powerful concept. As a matter of fact, I might even preach on this, mess, this passage uh, that I'm going to read in just a minute. But I, I think there's, uh, there's a passivity that passes for spirituality that misses what God has. In other words, people are waiting for God to move. And God is saying, no, you move, I move. He's already moved. People, people are sitting at the stop sign waiting for the light to turn green. It's always a green light till you get a red light from heaven. 
And I just, I want to say, there's a victory awaiting your arrival. There's a victory awaiting you to show up. The, the, the waters parted, the waters of Jordan parted when the priest stepped into the waters. The waters didn't part and clear out and then let them pass through. No, they stepped in. And I'm saying that this is a huge principle in the kingdom of God. We have to take the initiative to overcome passivity. We're waiting for God to do it, but God moves when we move. 2 Kings 7 says, verse 3, There are four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why do we sit here until we die? If we say we're going to enter the city, then the famine's in the city. We're going to die there. If we sit here, we're going to die also. This is not a good conversation. Now, therefore, come, let us go to the camp of the Arameans. If they spare us, we'll live. If they kill us, we shall but die. <laughs> so, very positive. They arose at twilight to go to the camp of the Arameans. When they came to the outskirts of the camp of the Arameans, behold, there was no one there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Arameans to hear a sound of chariots, a sound of horses, even the sound of a great army. But they said to one another, Behold, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites, the king of the Egyptians to come upon us. God affected their perception of what was going on. When, when these four leprous guys said, Why sit here till we die? Let's get up and go. God shifted things for the Arameans, and they ran off. Therefore they arose and fled in the tw in the twilight, they left their tents, their horses, their donkeys, even the camp, just as it was. They fled for their life. When these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they entered one tent, ate and drank, carried from there silver and gold and clothes, went and hid them. Then they returned. Can you imagine that? They go, it's like, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. And then they go back, and there's more. Returned and entered another tent and carried from there also, went and hid them. Why sit here till you die? We may die if we go. We may die if we try. But we'll certainly die if we just sit here. If we just coast. I'd rather die as a moving target than a sitting duck. Come on. Uh, uh, better to die trying than live wondering. Be better, to, better to die believing than live in doubt. And I'm saying, this is a principle, please. You don't know what God has planned for you until you step out into his plan for you. It, there's always a certain amount of risk any move forward. When we moved to this city, there was risk. One facility, there's risk. Next facility, there was risk. Another facility, every, everything we've done has been some kind of risk. And, and for you, whatever, whatever is becoming the next season of your life that you know God wants you to do, there's a certain amount of risk to go back to school, a uh, certain amount of risk to buy the first house, Certain amount of risk to start the business. Certain amount of risk to start the exercise program. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Come on, it's just a certain amount of risk in that. Certain amount of risk to, to step into the new ministry. Hey, listen, certain amount of risk in rebuilding these whole facilities. All right, a little bit of risk involved in it. Woohoo! But what I love about this story is this, the wealth transferred when they made the move. The wealth didn't show up. There's nothing we've ever done as a church that we had the money in the bank to do. And I'm not an advocate for foolishness by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I want to use as much wisdom as I possibly can in anything I do. 
but there was never enough money to make any move we've ever made. When you make a move, wealth moves to that move. Somebody could take that to heart and it would change a lot about the way your life is. God created a perception <laughs> uh, and I just believe, I believe God can, can shift the perception for you about your life and the perception of favor that people have toward you. Everybody say, let the past go. Rise up and get going. Cross over into new territory. Anybody ready to do that? Come on. All right, so let's talk about it. I, I, I've been inspiring. Now let's, let's get to it, right? So endeavor. Everybody say endeavor. Endeavor, endeavor is our commitment. Now, you know this. Any, any goal that you set uh, is it's not so much achieving the goal as it is the person you have to become to achieve the goal. And I just want to say that to, to us in this room, we, uh, our church, our church needs a mountain to climb uh, and, and, and needs to, to be reoriented and discipled in a few things because it's, it's too safe for some people. It doesn't require any faith for them. It doesn't require any risk. It doesn't require any sacrifice. It, I mean, you know, those are all part of being a Christian. Faith and risk and sacrifice, that's part of the deal. Take up your cross and follow me, Jesus said. It's part of the deal. So endeavor is our commitment to faith. It's our commitment to being a generous church. We are a generous church. We will be a generous church. And it's our commitment to make an impact and not just maintain the aquarium. So here's, here's the deal. Everything that we need to do around here, we need to raise $4 million. Amen. Come on. Yeah, $4 million. Now, uh, I would like to do that quickly, but what we're going to do is start out with uh, breaking this into some phases a little bit. So $4 million, we're going to break this into phases. And the first phase is going to be completely unglamorous. My apologies. But uh, it's going to be the architects and the engineers and the contractors. And it's going to be all the stuff that you're going, is anything happening? Yeah. It's, it's like when you're praying and you're waiting for your breakthrough. And you're going, is anything happening? Yeah, I'm praying, man. <laughs> Seeking God. I'm going after it. Speaking a word, living in faith, yeah, something was happening, but I haven't seen it yet. It's going to be kind of like that phase. So that phase, and then, then we've got three or four phases to follow that as we make all this happen. Uh, I'd love to do all this in a year, but it's more likely it's going to take us three, uh, although I just believe God could give us a breakthrough, and uh, we could have some fantastic things happen. So first phase uh, is we, we need to raise... $500,000 now. Now. Okay. So that's a half a million dollars. Uh, that gets us started towards the $4 million project. And uh, just so you could have uh, some perspective, uh, uh, it, Moses is dead. Kingdom Builders is dead. Uh, you know, typically when we would have a kingdom builder's day one offering, uh, we would receive maybe eighty to a hundred thousand dollars in in that offering. So now we're saying, all right, we're going to shift, change gears, turn the page, new day. Okay, so uh, let me let me get a let me get a couple of people just to share some thoughts with you. Justin, where's Justin? Justin Clark, everybody, give Justin. A great big hand. He's awesome. He's awesome plus. 
Uh, you can sit here or stand there, whatever you want to do. I'll stand. Yeah, I'll Justin stand. shared a story with us the other day, and I thought, we just all need to hear it. It's just a powerful. He just wanted me to follow the money section. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, we're going to raise this. All right, Justin, come here, come here. Hey, so uh, my name is Justin Clark. I'm on staff here. I have, a, I have an absolutely gorgeous wife who is on staff. And then I've posted one picture of my son so far, maybe two. A who day. A, a day. day. A day. <laughs> yeah. I actually have like triple that amount in my phone in a separate <laughs> folder with spreadsheets correlating. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> You're welcome. So uh, I was at a meeting in my neighborhood the other day, and um, an HOA meeting. I love those things. Uh, and the president of the HOA meeting showed up late. So I had 45 minutes to kill, and I was meeting my neighbors, who I just usually don't sit there and talk to for 45 minutes. And I talked to this lady, and she was an elderly lady. She was probably mid-70s, early 80s, somewhere around there. I don't want to offend anybody if they're that, and I'm saying elderly, I don't know. I love Vicky's parents. <laughs> Y'all are young at heart. Uh, oh, awesome. and, and the walkers. Yeah, come on. Anybody else, anybody else want to claim? And Anybody else in their 70s? <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> you do it all right, good. Oh. Oh. So uh, I'm losing them now, I'm losing them. It's gone. So I'm chatting with this lady, and she asks what I do for work. And I told her that I work at the Rock Church. And she's like, oh, that's awesome. Blah, blah. I've heard good things about the church. And I'm like, yeah, it's an awesome place. I love it. Um, you know, we're constantly doing stuff, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So then I said, do you go to church? And she goes, yeah, I've gone to the same church for 60, or not, sorry, I'm sorry, 40 something years. I'm like, she said since 60 something. And I'm like, wow, I'm like, that's awesome. And I won't name the church because uh, I was just like, how is it? You know, you, you've been going that long. The church has been around that long. That's awesome. You all must be thriving. And she looked me in the face and she said, actually, we're dying. And I was like, Okay, hello, <laughs> hey. I said, uh, okay. She goes, uh, there is, if we, if, if we have Sunday school, there is one young person that comes. One. And she goes, that's if. That, so they don't have Sunday school because there's this one guy that'll come that'll bring his daughter. She knew his name specifically because he's the only guy that brings his kid to the church. No other kids want to go to the church because... And this, these are all her words. Like, I'm not, I am quoting her saying, we won't change. We like where we're at, so we're not going to reach the next generation. But because of that, we are dying. And she personally didn't want that to happen, but she can't do anything about it in her church. And that, that like, okay, so I've been going to The Rock for almost six years now. Um, lo love this place. I'm on staff, whatever. I love this place. I don't care what y'all say. I'm on staff. Um, <laughs> love this place. But I love this place because people like my awesome wife, we have an awesome kids ministry that there are piles of kids. If you go down there, it is, it's like going to Fun Depot. It is kids everywhere. They're running around. It smells like two-year-olds. I don't like the way two-year-olds smell. I'm going to have one <laughs> in my house soon. Just, they just have a smell. And then we have the awesome Friths who have awesome student ministry. It's inside of, the, inside of this room on Wednesday night. It doesn't smell like this. It smells like middle schoolers. <laughs> terrible. No, the high schoolers smell like middle schoolers. It's bad. So, but I love that because those, those aromas and those smells means we're doing something. Yeah. It means it's not us showing up in our suits and us showing up with our choir and our flags and just doing the same thing we've been doing for 20, 30, 40 years. We are reaching the next generation. We are reaching them because of men like Pastor Kirk who are willing to just say, you know what, let's do what's best for them and not, not what I think, what's best for the next generation. Yeah. Men like Pastor Chris Frith, yeah. women like Lisa Frith, yeah. doing the same thing. My wife doing the same thing, yeah. reaching the next generation. This whole, this whole story, this whole experience, it's still so fresh to me. This lady, a little over a week ago, telling me, looking me in the face, telling me that her church is dying because they will not change. Mm. They like where they're at. She said, everybody in their church, 
over 50, over 60. She's like, we're not going to be here in 10 years. And I'm like, that, I can't even swallow that. I can't, I can't imagine this place not being here. I can't imagine my son not being able to grow up in this church. Right. And, and, and my prayer always is that this church is not going to be exactly like it is. When he comes in and he's the stinky middle schooler that I'm yeah. like, dude, you smell. Go take a shower or something. And he's this stinky high schooler. He's this stinky two-year-old. I don't want that. I don't want him to be, I don't want him to, to not want to come here. I want him, even though I work here, even though Teresa works here, to be able to go, I want to go to that place because they're always trying to reach me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, awesome. Thanks. Thank you. No, no, you leave it alone. All right. Beautiful. Thanks. All right. Hey, so let's, let's, hear, let's hear from the real boss around here. Come on. <laughs> I missed you guys this morning. <laughs> I did. It was so good to get here tonight because I missed my church. Yeah. I love my church. Yeah. You guys are so awesome. I just want to share a couple of things that, that I felt the Holy Spirit had put on my heart, in, especially in recent weeks. And as we're approaching this, you know, um, there's just a lot that's been processing in my own heart and in my own spirit. And, and it's like, you know, I cried through my daughter getting married, and now it's like I see God's about to move us into a, even a new season here, and it's like I find myself sentimental and, and teary-eyed sometimes, but at the same time, I've never been more excited about what God wants to do in and through us, and you know, and uh, as you, you can look at Kirk and I, and you can see that we are young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ish. Yeah. Young ish. <laughs> but you know what? Yeah. We are just as passionate, if not even more determined than ever before, to finish what God has called us to do. And so I I love to look up words in the dictionary. So I looked up the word because, you know, when Kirk first mentioned this thought to me at first, I was like, oh, gosh, that means things can get messy. You know, if you do anything in a house that's different, you know, you tear anything out, things get messy sometimes. And I hate messes. I don't like things. So it kind of unsettles me. And I find if, if stuff like that happens in my own house or something breaks and you know, got to get things repaired or we got to change things. It unsettles me. How many of you ladies know what that's like? Mm. It's just, yeah, it can make you cranky. And um, <laughs> so anyway, I looked up the word unsettling because I thought at first, I thought, oh, boy, here we go. You know, this is going to be a journey. I looked up the word unsettling. It says to loosen or move from a settled, uh, a settled start or a state or condition, to loosen or to move from a settled state or condition. And mm -hmm. I thought, that's what God's wanting to do yeah. in and among us. And so, you know, looking at my own personality type, I can tell you that I am on the personality scale. If you've ever taken the test, it's sanguine and phlegmatic. I know you're surprised at that. But it's phlegmatic. Phlegmatics do not like change. And do you know that more than 60% of humanity is phlegmatic? Mm. Yeah. So that means that sometimes we have to stir things up in our own selves, right? <laughs> Instead of just laying down and let things happen to us. Right. And so, um, you know, I, I thought about that scripture where um, Paul tells Timothy, who was his son and his uh, disciple, and said, you stir up mm. the gift and the calling of God in you. You stir it up. And so we have that responsibility for our own spirits and our own souls to stir what God wants to say and what he wants to do within our own lives. And so I knew that this was going to be a challenge for us. And at first I, I was like, I'm not sure if I'm ready for that. I know it's going to be stressful, but I call it a glorious stress mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's going to be a glorious stretch 
in every single one of our lives. And as Kirk even said before, it's not, it's not even going to be the building. I so have this so strong in my spirit. It's not even just going to be the building. It's going to be what God does in us as a group of people. Yeah, yeah, yes. And as he said, you know, I heard somebody say a while back, the, a generation is a group of people that are breathing at the same time. Yeah. So that means, like Kirk said, whether you're, you're seven or you're 87, we're all going to move into a, a, a realm in the spirit realm that maybe that we've never even reached before. And I do believe that we can do it together. And a while back, I felt the Holy Spirit putting these words in, in my spirit every time I went into my prayer time. And I felt him say, I'm not calling you. And I, I knew it was for me, but I knew it was for our church. I'm not calling you to tread water mm. and enjoy the ocean. I'm calling you to come up and walk on water. Mm. Mm. And I, I, I mean, I know that means a lot of things. And, and I know that that means that, that I got to trust Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and I got to trust, you know, the leadership of the house mm -hmm. if we're going to do this together. But we're going to go into that together. And as I, as I said before, weeks back or months back when we first started talking about this, I do believe that we have a mandate from heaven. Yeah. And I love looking up words in the dictionary, so I looked up that too. And it means an authorization, mm. a license, and an empowerment. And I, I believe without a shadow of a doubt that we can do this together. I believe it too. This yeah, generation, yeah. Yeah. we can do this together. And even yeah. as Kirk was talking about, you know, being in the airport today, even last night we were at a reception, a wedding reception. And I sat there and I looked around and I thought, how many of these people, and this, of course, in New Orleans, but I feel that way about my city. How many of these people on Saturday night are going to be in the house of God receiving something significant we have a lot of work to do. We do, we do. yeah. And God is going to use somebody to do his work. It yeah. might as well be us. Come on. So yeah. anyway, so this generation can do this. And another thing I felt the Holy Spirit put on my heart, I keep hearing these words in the meantime. And so for anybody that might feel like this is unsettling, you know, this is going to rock my boat, and it is, you know, because anything that we do for God is going to require something of us, which takes us out of our comfort zone. And so the words in the meantime keep coming to me. So I want to assure those of you that might be thinking, is it going to be all about a building? I want to say this is what the Holy Spirit wrote to me. In the meantime, yeah, it is going to be a great journey. It is going to be a stretching journey. But in the meantime, we're going to still be growing. Yep. In the meantime, we're going to still see lives transformed. Yes. In the meantime, we're going to keep reaching, yes. and we're going to keep lifting people to live greater lives than they ever thought possible. And in the meantime, we're going to still be loving on people yeah, yeah. with the power of the Holy Spirit that's going to help us to go beyond ourselves. In the meantime, we're going to still be doing life as a church yeah. and be the church that God has called us to be. And Amen. I think we can all do that together. Amen. I love you guys. Thank Amen. you. Awesome. So, uh, so, so here's here's where we are. I mean, it. it, it you understand this is it, honestly. It's not about like oh, our church is this putrid thing that if we don't come out of it, we're just gonna die next week. Um, I mean, we we've uh, we're. Ryan was quoting the figure last week. We've already seen 455. Uh, it's getting close to 500 people get saved this year so far in our church. And, and we're, we're going for that. Uh, this year, we're, we're sending five teams out in, uh, to, the, you know, to the nations, to other places. Uh, 75, 80 people going out. Most of them, we want to come back. And... <laughs> But I mean, so we're not going to, we're, we are definitely not going to get swallowed up with some building thing. You know what I mean? It's like, we're going to keep reaching, keep going to the nations, keep helping the poor, keep doing things that we've got to be doing. Uh, so we're, everybody say both boss, both boss. So, but I'm, uh, here's, here's the thing, here's the challenge. I just want the reality check. So wandering in the desert, manna same clothes, 
used to that. Now it's like, take a city. Okay, that's a different thing. That's just, a, you're, you're shifting from wandering to warrior. Di different mentality, different season. And while I'm thrilled with what's happened uh, in our church right now, I'm just saying to you, uh, for us to do this is going to require a different level of faith, a different level of generosity. Now, when I say a different level of generosity, I, I, must, I want to make sure we're clear. That means I have got to go to a new level personally. We all do. Well, and if we're really going to win this thing. Uh, we built this building uh, with, a, with a church family that was about a third the size of this church family. Uh, this was a little over $2 million when we built this first building. Uh, if we were to build it today, it would probably be close to four. Uh, so four million is not that, it's not impossible for us. It, but, but, it, but it is not going to happen with uh, tipping. Can I say it that way? Um, we, we can do this. So we got to wrestling, thinking, arguing, trying to figure out uh, how, how we're going to do this. How, how we're going to see this happen. How we're going to break through into uh, a different level, a different place. And um, so uh, here's, here's an idea that I think is a God idea. Uh, actually, it came from my wife. Imagine that. Our church has uh, approximately um, 1,350 people in it. Uh, we got a little over 900 adults in our church. Uh, those 900 adults would make a, up about 600 um, either families or individuals that would could help, could make a difference. So he, here's the thing that I think would be a, would help us break through. If 300 of 900 or 300 of the 600 even families would give $1,000 on May 31st. Shout me down, somebody. 300 give $1,000. You might say, I have never given $1,000 in my life. Awesome. It's a new day. It's a new season. Uh, so, so I want you to pray about that. Now, some of you can, $1,000 doesn't matter to you at all. Honestly, I mean, you can do that, and it wouldn't, you, you know, it's not even a bump in the road for you. God's probably going to call you to something bigger and more than that, right? Some of you, and I, and I totally realize this, and I don't, but I don't want to take the effect of $1,000 out of your thinking. Some of you, are, it's, you can't. There's just no way. It's not going to happen. But I'm, what I'm saying is you've got to go someplace you've never gone before. Um, but, but I think $1,000 is a good goal. I remember us being challenged in Bible college uh, to put a roof on uh, a native church uh, and to give $1,000 to that. I remember uh, working afternoons in a bank while I was going to Bible college, giving $1,000. Like, I don't even know where I got $1,000. I was eating ramen noodles. To Anybody, everybody, anybody, anybody ever been in college? You know, that's like, come on. They, somebody say, I ain't even in college, but I'm eating ramen noodles, so shut up. There's a young man that's been coming to our church, uh, and, and he started go, going to Asheville School, which is kind of a boarding school. Uh, his name is Drake Coleman, and uh, he's, a, he's really a great young man. And uh, he just started showing up, and, and we're like, you need help to get back? He goes, no, 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 man, he just he'll call a taxi. He's bringing people left and right to church with him, and uh, he's 15. He's a 15-year-old young man, uh, and he's and he's just falling in love with what God's doing here. And he's he was just here for a few months. Started s September, going to school there. Started coming here, and he heard the uh, the Christmas miracle offering uh, idea that what we wanted to do, and and he just had his heart go. I, I, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of that. So his 
his dad and his granddad uh, raised cattle. It's one of the things they do. And they gave him one of the cattle. It was like his. And may, uh, some, I'm not sure if the story's right, if it was the first one he's ever gotten, but he, but he received uh, a cow. And he said, I want to be a part of this uh, Christmas miracle offering. So he sold the cow they gave him. Uh, this sounds like Old Testament, man. It's like, a, it's like a, a burnt offering, you know? It's like he sold the cow and, uh, and, and gave a thousand bucks. Fifteen-year-old kid gave a thousand bucks in the Christmas miracle offering. Come on, you can do it. Come on. Sell a cow. So our ushers are going to pass, uh, pass out these um, brochures that are going to give you some information about uh, Endeavor and what this is all about. And so here's, here's, where, I'm, here's where I'm going with this. Um, I just believe it's time for, if, if we're going to have breakthrough, it's because this group is going to break through. So, so that, that, that means on every level, in terms of faith, uh, in terms of generosity, in terms of energy. So like when we start talking about this in church, uh, there's going to be some people, the warfare is going to go on. That church is just after our money. They're sitting in a building that somebody else paid for. They didn't, but you got to understand that stuff's going to go on. So when, when I stand up here or Ryan stands up here or Suzette or somebody, anybody else stands up here and they start going, come on, May 31st, Endeavor, spring offering, uh, 300 people giving $1,000, then I want you to hoot and holler and go, a thousand. Come on, somewhere I want you to even me think a thousand. That's for the babies. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go big on this thing. But you're just going to give your energy to it. Can you do it? So this will give you some information uh, about, um, about what's going on and what this is all about. As always, uh, any, any questions you have, we'll do our best to answer them. Uh, bring all questions to Ryan. And um, he will take care of every single question you have. He has all the answers. But come on, somebody say never settle. Never settle. So uh, you also find some um, information about this on uh, if you go to choosegenerosity.com. It's an entire website that is uh, dedicated to Endeavor. And uh, so we're going to be doing Endeavor May 31st. We're just going to have a breakthrough day. Come on, let's have a breakthrough day for our church. Yeah. Will you join me with that? Let's have a breakthrough day for our church. Uh, and let's all be a part of it. And then through, through the year, we are going to, you know, use the best wisdom that we can possibly use. But our church needs to be uh, discipled in honoring God with tithe and offering. And, and I, I don't want to, you know, press, uh, turn the screw so much that we strip the threads. Uh, so we're going to try to be careful about that. But I mean, you know, your money is tied to your heart. Your heart is tied to your money. And, and we're just, we are, I am fully committed. Suzette and I are fully committed as people to say that honoring God is such a big heart issue for us. I, I would do without anything else in my life. I would do with I would I would never play golf again. The Lord is my witness. If that's what I had to do to keep paying tithe, I mean honestly, I would never eat another Oreo. Come on, we're going deep now, son. We're going deep now. But I just I just want to say that I, I am committed to it because I just believe it honors God. I, I'm and I, and I want our church to be the kind of church that honors God. What I have discovered is that God is true to His word. That if you will bring your first and your best to him, he will open the windows of heaven and he will pour out a blessing that cannot be contained. It will happen for you.